I've been doing Joe's work for three years. This is my seventh workshop. Um, and I will be back here in June again. So what happened was in April of this year, I got a um, blood clot in my leg that broke off and went into my lungs. And um, I'd had some blood clots in my leg before, so I thought I knew what to do, and I was looking it up on the internet to just kind of figure, do I put hot or cold on it? And I saw one sentence that jumped off. I'd been feeling something in my lungs, thinking I was getting sick, and a sentence jumped off that said, this can break off and go into your lungs. And I knew that had happened, so I called my doctor, and he said, get to the hospital. I never did really understand how serious this was. So I went to the hospital with my iPad thinking I'd be there an hour and go home. <laughs> and instead, within an hour, I was hospitalized and um, put on some blood thinners. And the doctor came in and said, um, because of my history um, and my family history, that I would be on blood thinners the rest of my life. So the family history is my grandmother, who I realized was four years older than I am now, got a complete, she got, went to the doctors and got a clean bill of health. The next day she took a nap and never woke up. There was a blood clot that broke off and went into her heart and she had a heart attack. Um, my father, that was my father's mother and my father had a, um, he fell and got a blood clot in his leg that went up into his lungs and it contributed to his death. It didn't cause it, but it was one of the factors. So when I explained those two things, plus the fact that I'd already had about three blood clots, they said, what you've got is called factor five. It's a blood clot disorder. And it means you have to stay on blood thinners because they don't want your blood clotting because it often does, it breaks off and goes into the lungs, the heart, and the brain. None of which do you want. So. Um, I'm not real big on medication, and when I went to my doctor and he said the same thing, because of your history and your family history, you have got to be on Xarelto the rest of your life. And I said, absolutely not. There is, there is no way. I said, there must be something alternative. And he said, and we went back and forth. There was even one visit where my um, friend, my best friend Rita, went with me to the doctor, um, she, she'd known him a long time, and he turned to her and says, you tell Nancy she has got to stand Zarelto the rest of her life. And my best friend says, you don't know my friend. <laughs> uh, so um, that was in April. In June, I was here in Cancun and got a coherence healing, and I had started doing the meditations much more regularly because I don't know about you, but I lie to myself about how well I'm doing and how often I do them. So I got a calendar and put it in the kitchen and I write down every single day that I meditate because I wanted to hold myself accountable. It wasn't about being perfect, it was about being truthful. Um, I put it into my mind movie, so because um, it's kind of the same thing as I say, I exercise three to four times a week. So it's along the same lines of, in my mind I do. So I, um, a yeah, it's a rehearsal. A little so, mental rehearsal on those exercises. Um, I, it's in my mind movie. I got a coherence healing in June. And that one, there was a lot of movement. I was crying. It was very, um, it was forceful. I turned around and signed up for Toronto and went to Toronto two months later. Meanwhile, I was meditating very regularly. Mostly the blessing of the energy centers, four, because that's that was my favorite one. Did Toronto, got a coherence healing then. And my doctor back in April said, you have to go to the hematologist and get tested for this so that we can prove to you what you have. And I said, well, I'm really busy this summer. How about mid-September? <laughs> Which I knew would be after I got back. So um, that's what I did. And um, the, the coherence healing in Toronto was very different. It was very gentle when I got it. So they, they were both very different. 
And the fact that I had no symptoms, there was no way of me knowing anything until I went and got the blood test. So I went to the hematologist in September. She hears the history. She looks at everything. She says, oh, you've got this thing called factor five. Let's get your blood tested. So um, I did. And a couple of weeks later, I went back to her for results. And I knew, I just was so clear that my body was healed because I had been talking to it. I'd heard testimonials, and the ones in June last year were, this year were amazing. The Parkinson's and the lady with tremors were, what, 30 years gone? I mean, and I was talking to my body going, listen, body, these people are healing cancer, and they're healing Parkinson's, and they're getting out of wheelchairs. You can do a little blood disorder, <laughs> really. <laughs> And that was, that was my mindset. And so, um, you know, it was really a, not a huge deal when she says your blood is fine. There is no disorder in your blood whatsoever. And oh, well, um, I, I was really proud. I was really proud of myself. And I, she said, you can get off the Xarelto, which had been all I wanted. And I said, well, how or is there? And she says, just stop taking it right now, and it's done. So um, I'm so, so pleased. And there's more. I'd forgotten to even write it in the note. I've been working on my thyroid because I have a thyroid, TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone. Numbers have been going up. Um, because of some thyroid work I had done a year ago. So I've been picturing them. It's part of the mind movie, right where I want it. And during the same time, that number turned around without medications. So it's headed in the right direction. <laughs> yep. And um, I get it tested again next month, and I thoroughly expect it to be at 2.53 because I wanted an odd number that I would know I was doing it. I was having an influence. And there's more. <laughs> One more thing. So before I came here last week, a couple of days before, I got quiet and I said, so what's my intention for Cancun? What do I want? And then I had the most amazing realization. I have been in a battle with food since I was three. That's a long time. <laughs> um, it's a food addiction, chocolate, sugar, flour, the works. And um, I have known in my soul that there was a way that this could be healed. I've known that for 20 years, but I never knew how. I just, I didn't want to, it's not diet. I just knew there was a way that this could be done. And so when I got this idea of, I'm gonna rewire my brain. And I... <laughs> I like it. I love it. <laughs> so um, it's not happened yet, but I'll be back in June. I can tell it's the chaos, you know, the disorder. I'm hoarding, you know, out of the, um, the midi bar. Every day I take all the chocolate and put it in my drawer so they'll refresh it. And <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm not done being with that, but I also am realizing, I know that's just this, this starting to, it's working in there, and this is the chaos first of the, the fighting back, but um, at lunch today, I was talking with this wonderful two women, and one of them, her son, is 11, and we were talking about this food addiction. I was explaining it, and she realizes that's what he has, and the box thing that we did is perfect for him and for me because I, I'm, I can't tell you how grateful I am to know that there's actually hope not, not even hope. There's like the guarantee that this can happen. And I don't want to leave, leave this lifetime having never really done this. This is a big one for me now. So, um...